Okay, welcome back. We are today going to go over, um, we've already logged in, we've gone over login and registration, how to create a portfolio. And so now we're going to look at how to add stocks, delete stocks, and then remove an entire portfolio. So we're logged in as our friend Bob Barker. We've got Price is Right, Price is Wrong, and Happy Gilmore. If you've seen the movie, um, Bob is in that, with Adam Sandler. And um, anyway, so what I want to do is kind of go over how the back end works on these. And so I'll start with the add stocks function. So, um, you know, let's say if on um, price is right here, we want to actually let's go over here because these are doing pretty good today. Um, we'll do the price is wrong. We'll add stocks and we want to add, you know, let's just say Hecla mining. Um, and here it tells us what the portfolio is that we're adding to. So there's no mistake there. And I mean, even if we do make a mistake, we can always delete the stock, it's not a big deal. Um, but let's add Hecla and let's add um, SLV and GLD, which are the silver and gold ETFs. We'll create, probably change this to add now that I'm looking at it. And so what it's gonna do is add these stocks um, to the database. This is the first time I've used the API. It always takes a second to warm up for some reason. Um, okay, so we can see here it's added, Hecla Mining, iShare Silver Trust, Spider Gold Trust. Um, so let's take a look at the back end code here. So we go down to add stocks to existing portfolio. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna grab um, the portfolio ID here from, so when the user goes to, these are the two links to add stocks, delete stocks. And we're passing in the, using Jinja, the actual portfolio for the first uh, portfolio. We do the same thing for the second portfolio. Um, and then the ID. So when they click the link, it automatically routes to know what the um, ID is. And we pass that ID through and then, um, that brings us to the actual add stock page. So if we go um, back to here, you can see that's how it gets grabs this. So on the add stocks actual page, da, 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 where are we? Tech center. Yeah, and so we've we've got the portfolio ID on the actual add stock, um, the page we hit the route. Um, which we are going to use to actually add the stock to that specific um, portfolio. And then you can see um, up here, it says add stocks to, and again, we're just using Jinja to grab the portfolio name. Um, this is just making sure the user is logged in. So it's real simple. So the portfolio is just get the portfolio by ID, which we passed in that returns the portfolio name. Um, and also the uh, ID we're going to use. So that's all we're using with the portfolio, just the name and ID, because we need the ID to tell to um, make sure the database is storing in the correct place. So then we go down here, and then we have our post route. So once we hit the, so we're going to the add stock route. As I mentioned, we are passing the portfolio ID. And just like when we create a portfolio, we're just grabbing a list of tickers. So here we go. I won't go over this again. This basically goes through and changes everything to uppercase. It makes sure that the symbol that the user typed in is, in, is a legitimate symbol. Um, you know, because people make mistakes and it will give you an error if you do have, right? Um, if the ticker isn't, isn't um, the proper one. And then we grab the stock names and stock IDs and we go through and run this get stock IDs um, formula, which function, which I'll just go over briefly again all the way down here. Oh, no, sorry, that's in the, uh, in here, get stock IDs. So basically what this does, and it's got a couple other things in it, it's basically gonna go out to the database and say, okay, if Home Depot stock is already in the database, we're just gonna grab the ID from the database and use that. If not, we're gonna go make an API call to using Y Finance. We're gonna grab the stock data we need, which is just the stock name, really. We're gonna store it in the stock database, and then we're gonna grab the ID that is created when that stock is put in the stock table uh, in the database and pull that ID back. So whether the stock is in the database or not, we're gonna get the um, original ID or a new ID if we need to create a new thing in the database. Um, so that's what that does. And then this is that portfolio ID I said we're grabbing. 
because we need that for the join table here. And then all we're going to do, because we already have, already have a portfolio created, if we needed to create new stocks, that's already being done right here. And then so all we're going to do is pass in the portfolio ID and the stock IDs. And so we will go to that. And essentially all we're doing here through the database, we're just putting in a data dictionary and we're just inserting it into that um, join table. So if it's, I think this is portfolio ID 12. So it's 12, it's going to add whatever stocks um, to that portfolio ID so it can reference them. So that's how the add stock works. Um, we'll go back and then, okay, let's decide, all right, we just want actual individual stocks. We don't want, you know, silver and gold as a commodity in there. So we want to delete them. So then we go to delete stocks and let's just go over how this one is created. So from portfolios, same idea. We've got the portfolio ID being passed in. We'll go to delete stock, which is right here. And again, delete stocks from this portfolio name. And so this is highlighted to make sure, you know, um, the user knows they're in the right portfolio, which I mean, I guess they would see all these. And then it runs through and it lists every stock attached to that um, portfolio ID in the database. And then what we're going to do down here to the form, then we'll send this to a post route, which is delete stock. And all we're going to do, all we're going to need to know again is the portfolio ID and then the stock. Um, oh, I'm sorry. This lists every stock for the portfolio ID, which I think again is 12 for this. And then if we check off which ones we want to get rid of and we delete, just going to pop them right out. So it's going to keep, and again, I mentioned this in another video, it's going to keep those stocks um, or ETFs, I guess they are technically um, in the stock database because over time the database will basically hold every like most common stock plus a few fringe ones. But this way over time that database, we no longer need to go to Y finance. Um, the less we have to call it, obviously the faster the application is going to work. And I don't see um, a time where we're going to get thousands and thousands of stocks in the database. So, um, I mean, if we did, that'd be great. That means a lot of people are using it, but I don't think that'll be an issue right now. And so um, this again was just the Git route and then the post route again. Um, so to get the stock IDs, right? Cause the tickers don't do us any good. We wanna, we wanna delete the stock ID from the join table. So um, we request.form get the list of tickers that the user has checked off, create a data dictionary. We go and grab the ID of that stock ticker symbol from our database, right? Cause they have to be in the database because they're part of a portfolio. Then we'll append those IDs to this list. So we have a list of IDs we need to get rid of. We grab the portfolio ID, um, as I showed you just in a hidden um, input form, we've got that. And then we just go to portfolio stocks again, right here, and we run the um, delete stocks, which is a pretty simple you know, um, data dictionary to make the query, which is just the portfolio ID, which is you know basically hard-coded. And then we run through uh, we loop through the list of stock IDs and we're just going to delete from that join table every um, stock ID that's linked to that portfolio ID. And then, of course, we just redirect back to portfolios and here we are. Now, the last thing I want to show in this video is just how we remove the entire portfolio. Originally, what I had is that you would go to delete stocks and if you deleted every stock, it would delete the whole thing. Um, which it could do, but this is most people are going to have a lot more stocks than this in a portfolio, and I don't. And I could do a select all, but I just I'm trying to avoid user error and a select all. You know, this way it's separate, and it is going to send a, a message to make sure you want to delete. Just seems like a cleaner way to do it. Um, so that would be here. So remove portfolio. This is going to take us to a confirm page. So we'll just take a quick look at that. Uh, delete. Portfolio. So here we're going to delete portfolio, which is going to route us to, and again, we're going to go like we did with the add stocks and delete stocks, actually. We're going to go um, grab the portfolio name by using the portfolio ID from the, um, the link the user clicked, which is embedded in there using this you know, pass through function here um, or variable here. And then, um, oops, takes us to the delete portfolio page. Um, and then it's just saying, you know, are you sure you want to delete? Passing in the portfolio name. And then it's going to take us to the portfolio's delete, which is a post route. And so we'll just go ahead and actually delete. I actually don't really want to delete that one. Let's delete this one. Am I sure I want to delete the Happy Gilmore portfolio? Delete. And it's gone. 
And so now we're able to create a third portfolio. If you remember the other one, once you have three portfolios, you'll get an error message if you try and create a new one, because as of right now, it just lets you hold two portfolios. We could make it an endless number of portfolios and may do that in the future. But again, just trying to do a beta test of this and see, get some feedback and then alter it. So let's just take a quick look at the delete portfolio post route. It's obviously pretty simple. Um, again, just making sure the user's logged in. And all we need here is the portfolio ID. We go to the portfolio model and delete portfolio. We're just delete from portfolios where ID equals ID and we're done. And it's that quick. So that was just a quick overview of how we can add stocks, delete stocks and remove the entire portfolio if we wish to. Um, and of course we have a confirmation page here. As I've mentioned in previous videos, there are a few things I want to clean up on the front end before deployment, um, but, but nothing major. I mean, this could probably use a little more padding and, and, and things of that of that nature, but nothing too crazy. So that's what we're doing here. And then we're going to get into the really fun stuff in the next video, which is going to which we'll probably end up doing after the holidays as it is already December 22nd. And I fly out tomorrow to Florida to get out of the cold weather, although it's pretty beautiful out right now. Um, I just wanted to get this video in before I do that. And so when I get back, I'll go over the more um, detailed stuff, which really goes through really utilizing the Y Finance library to take advantage of Yahoo Finance's API and do a lot of calculations with moving averages um, and trend following and, and things of that nature. So hopefully have that up in about uh, a week to 10 days. So uh, thanks for listening. Hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, let me know.